Hello everyone, welcome in part 3 of this series that will be all about CNC laser cutting. As announced in the previous video, this video will be all about PWM signals. Now, Laser cutting is not all that different from regular CNC milling. Uh, the difference of course is the tool being used is a laser instead of a milling cutter. When you make tool paths for a laser uh, cutter, the difference is that instead of setting an RPM for your cutting tool, you will have to set a power setting for the laser. The laser is commanded by the control box with PWM signals. Now, if you make a toolpath for a CNC laser job, one of the things you will have to set is a parameter for the laser power. And the way to do that, as we will see later on, is by setting a virtual RPM value as if you would be commanding a spindle. The value that we will have to set is anywhere between 0 and 255. 0 being 0 power, which obviously wouldn't make much sense, and uh, 255 would um, correspond to 100% laser power. Why do we set values between 0 and 255 instead of between 0 and 100? I will come back to that uh, later on in this video and you will uh, quickly understand why that is. But for now, let's go to the setup here and let's do some measuring on the output signal. So I have the actual um, toolpath running, as you can see here from the Mach 3 screen. And the spindle speed, which is a virtual speed that corresponds to the power setting on the laser, is for the moment set at 126. What that means is if 255 corresponds to 100% power, then a setting of 126 should correspond to 50% power. If we look on the voltmeter, you see that we measure a voltage of 2.48 volts. Now let's change the virtual spindle speed, let's bump it up a little bit. We expect to see a rise in voltage, so let's do that. Let's go to, for example, to 80%. And we see indeed that the voltage rises to 4.16 volt. Now let's bump it up a little bit more to 100. So we have an actual signal going out of 255 um, virtual RPMs corresponding to 100% laser power and we see or we read a voltage of 4.79. We go back to zero and the voltage drops to almost zero. So the question is, is that the whole story? And of course the answer is no. The problem with the voltmeter is that the voltmeter is of course able to measure volts and if the voltage changes it will measure the change, but if the voltage changes really fast, then the voltmeter will only output an average value. So we don't really know if, let's say, in this setting where the voltage output shows 3.11 volts, we don't really know if behind the scenes, secretly, that voltage, the real output voltage, may be fluctuating between anything higher than 3 volts and anything lower than 3 volts. And if it fluctuates fast enough, it may very well be that the average value is 3.11 volts. In order to know that, we need a piece of equipment that is able to track voltage over time. And it is able to do it even if the voltage uh, changes really, really quickly. And what I have here is the polygraph for electronic signals otherwise known as an oscilloscope. So let's hook up the uh, output of the CNC controller to the oscilloscope and let's see what we measured there. So I hooked everything up to the oscilloscope. I made sure that you can still see the reading on the voltmeter here. And also I uh, already started the cutting cycle on the CNC machine so that there is indeed some output going into the oscilloscope. First, I will try to get some uh, decent readings on the oscilloscope screen because for now there's not much interesting going on. 
put the probe at the 10x setting and I'll try to see if I can get a signal with uh, just using the auto setup there's something already I will play a little bit with the triggering which probably will make the signal better and uh, there we are I will zoom out a little bit here first you see a repetitive pattern of periods in the x-axis actually is the time and during certain periods of time the voltage is high then it drops and then it's low for a certain period of time and then it goes up again so if we zoom in a little bit on the one of these pulses oh, the other way so what we see here is again the voltage being high for a certain period of time then it drops to zero it stays zero and then it goes up again what we can do with an oscilloscope is uh, we can measure two things we can measure in the vertical axis which will be measuring the voltage difference between the lowest voltage and the highest and we can also measure in the horizontal uh, direction which is a time measurement okay so what i did here is i set some cursor lines on the oscilloscope so that we can measure voltage difference between the lowest and the highest voltage and that we can also measure uh, the time that each cycle takes here I'm switching over to the web interface of the oscilloscope and I'm zooming in a little bit so that the measurements are more easy uh, to read. You see two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. The two horizontal lines are lined up with the lowest and the highest voltage in the signal. They are the Y measurements that you see in the measurement square. And the lowest Y measurement is zero value, the highest Y measurement is five value. That means that we have indeed a signal that's fluctuating between 0 and plus 5 volts. The two vertical lines are lined up with the beginning and the end of one cycle. The left vertical line is at the position 0 seconds. The right vertical line is lined up with the end of one cycle. The time difference between those lines tells us the time duration of one cycle, which is exactly one millisecond. In other words, if one cycle takes one millisecond then in one second you have 1000 cycles meaning that the frequency is 1000 hertz or as it's uh, expressed here one kilohertz that corresponds to one of the settings that you have to make in Mach 3 um, consistent with the instructions on the Oplaser website and that is if you look in the plug-in control for the spindle you have you have set the PWN base frequency at 1000 Hz being 1 kHz. What does that all mean actually? It means that the output signal is actually a series of pulses, hence the name pulse width modulation. What will we be modulating when you change the output power of the, uh, of the laser? Not the voltage, because as you see the voltage always fluctuates between 0 and 5, we do not have intermediate voltages such as uh, 2 or 3 or 4.5 volts. What we see on the voltmeter is an average reading, which is not what is actually going on behind the, the, the scenes. What is happening though is that the laser receives in, very fast, um, in a very fast sequence a large number of pulses that signals the laser to go on and off very fast, so fast that we don't see that it's actually blinking. And during each pulse, there is a certain time, this time here, that the laser will be on and a certain time that it will be off. The maximum power of the laser will be when we have the laser on for 100% of the time during the entire pulse width. Then we say the pulse width is at 100%. If we reduce the pulse width such that the plus 5 volt is only there for half of the time, then the pulse width is reduced to 50%. And the average voltage that we read on the voltmeter will be reduced to 2.5 volts. I can show you that by playing around with the spindle speed here in Mach 3. I can bump it up to for example almost 100% and then you will see 
that almost the entire time the voltage is at plus 5 volt and only a very short period of time, you can see it better here on this, uh, in this cycle, uh, pulse cycle, only a very short time the laser will be off and that will put the laser almost at 100% which will correspond to an average output voltage of almost 5 volts. If I reduce the spindle speed to half, to 50%, half of 255 is 100 and approximately 127, something along those lines. Now you see that the duty cycle is only 50%. 50% on, 50% off. Sure enough, the voltage drops to about 2.5 volts. And if I pull it even lower to, let's say, something like this, 25%, then the voltage go to, goes to 25% of 5 volt, which is approximately 1.2 volts. But what we should take from that is that first the laser is not really on all the time. It goes on and off, but it goes on and off very quickly. And that the output power is set by a duty cycle. The length of the duty cycle is defined by a number between 0 and 255. 0 corresponding to 0 power, because the duty cycle will be off for 100% of the time, and 255 corresponding to full power, where the duty cycle is plus 5 volts for 100% of the time. Now where does the odd number of 255 come from? That is because the system works digitally, it works with binary numbers and the output power, hence the duty cycle, is set by a binary number, in this case an 8-bit binary number. The highest binary value we can make with 8 bits is a binary number consisting of 8 times 1 and a binary number of 1111111 would correspond to a decimal number of 255. That is why we can set 255 different power levels. When you make toolpaths, the power setting is defined by, an, an, by setting an RPM, which is, if you have done the correct settings in Mark III, translated to a PWM signal, which will electronically be converted into a duty cycle that will put the laser on for a certain period of time and then off for a certain period of time fast enough so that the eye can see it but that the, so that the average output power is variable between 0 and 100%. If you still don't believe me, then please watch the next clip where I will reduce the base frequency for the PWM signal in Mark III. I will reduce it down to uh, 10 Hz I will let the laser do something and then you will see that at a base frequency of 10 Hz you will actually notice the laser going on and off. Okay, so here you see the laser actually working at a much lower uh, PWM base frequency which makes that it becomes actually visible for the eye that the laser is in reality flashing. Here the laser is uh, defocused uh, for safety reasons I will come back to the topic of focusing in detail in one of the next videos where I will talk about doing actual laser cutting. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. Like I said, it's not really an absolute necessity that you know all the ins and outs of PWM signals, but I think if you work with lasers, having a basic knowledge of what's behind the scenes is, is always good. And certainly it's interesting. At least it's interesting for me and yes I do like working with my hands and drive nails in wood and make shavings with the plane and so on but I'm also a little bit of a nerd. So see you in the next video where we will talk about toolpaths. See you then. Bye bye.